Cavanaugh on the pole, sitting position as he, as him and Zach Rogers lead us into turn number one for the final race before the race of legends in Wales. And we got X in the back already. That was one of the AFRT cars, uh, Vincent Allen, and somebody else just take a look. Alan Cavanaugh well. manages to hook the five of Jordan Davis, and that causes him to fly into Vincent Allen. Vladimir Petrov just self spun around. Look at the full accent. Vyron Petrov went self spun around and then Sean Galligan, DJ Curtis both went around. Looks like Seam Farther got some damage and uh, a tough first corner. This is a little bit after the carnage. Michael Block hooks Jordan Davis into Skylar Johnson and Block just spins Skylar Johnson around, although it did kind of look like Johnson did turn right into him. And Jesse Turner just self spun into the wall. Not a good start. We didn't even make it past. The first quarter. Zach Rogers right. looks like he's going to clear Michael Cavanero to take the lead from the 83. Cody Lamas all the way up to the back bumper of these guys already. And it has been a very um, unclean first lap as we've got the top three all stuck together in a mini snake. Vladimir Petrov, who did qualify in around fourth place, he's he didn't even get hit by the crash. He just spun coming off that corner. And uh, now I can start for the points leader at the moment. He's got to make up some ground. Oh boy, Jordan Davis. We're just getting a replay of this now. Jordan Davis and Mike Alan Cavanero were in the crash hitting each other after the accident. I think Davis blamed Cavanero for the accident. And oh my goodness me. Ooh, Davis not happy at all with that 07, and I can't blame him, but oh my Bound goodness. Bound for the lead again. Michael Kavner on the back bumper of the three. Here comes Cody Lamas trying to seep in. And ooh, Lamas trying to force his way past the 83, trying to make a hole that wasn't there, and Lamas trying, trying to make it three wide. As Kavner trying to make the pass. Very good battle so far here on the second lap. Well, we were wondering how Alan, if Alan Kavanaugh and Jordan Davis is the rivalry from last season would cross over to this season. And ironically, it was a rivalry that started at this track as well. It was one of the seeds planted for from uh, this rivalry, right? This racetrack, if I remember correctly. And it surfaced again and again on the first lap in the first corner. So, oh boy, got to wonder if they're going to do anything if the uh, stewards do anything to Cavanero and um, Davis after the race, I wouldn't be surprised. Ooh, trouble, Cooper Siron hooking the 77 of Chris Washer into the wall and almost into the, right into the wall near the spectators. And and Washer doesn't look like he's got too much damage, so it looks like he'll continue on. Ooh, Kyle Nova hooking the 54 and coming back up into him again. And that 28 making a very aggressive move to make this pass. He's taking no prisoners. With uh, the rumors of Yet Motorsports not returning to next season due to reportedly undisclosed rumors, you gotta imagine there's a bit of tension at the team and I think Nova's showcasing some of that. And then also what happened with Siron the lap before. Something's going on at Yamp and it's obviously having an effect on its own drivers. Oh trouble, Jake Basking, you're hooking the 79 of Josh Travel hard into the back end of the wall. Ouch. Cody Lamas making a move on Zach Rogers for the lead. There's going to be a lot of penalties after this one. Lamas underneath the number three. Down to the inside if he can just clear him. Coming down the straightaway here in the uh, Amsterdam airport racetrack, whatever you want to call it. This track has uh, so far been one of the best new additions to the schedule in recent years. and It's put it on... A hell of a show, and uh, the long straightaways and the aerodynamics have been allowing for a lot of close racing. And Lamas, Cody Lamas taking the lead. Him and Zach Rodgers are Vladimir Petrov's two biggest opponents in this championship right now. If now they can just stay 1-2, they are going to gain a lot of ground on Petrov, who is still outside the top 30 as First pit stop of the day, Cody Lamas will surrender the lead to Michael Cavanero to take Michael his Cavanero, who is the leader entering pit road. We'll see where he ends up, if he can end up in front of Cody Lamas and Zach Rogers. 
And looks like he will. Michael Cavanero with a stellar pit stop as Rodgers and Lamas just lost a few seconds to the 83. Rodgers falls, catches back up to second, and Lamas falls back down to third. And Veronica Nowakowski up there, she is apparently still on the lead lap. She just hasn't pitted Ooh, yet. Charles Jackson, he's going to hook Charles Sanford into the inside wall. And well, he didn't go around like Chris Washer. Jordan Smith is now around the background. Looks like it's going to be Kyle Nova putting the aggressive move on Jordan Smith. Didn't even let off for him. Didn't even bother hitting the brakes. A lot of teams were concerned about two things. That was the first turn and the final turn. And it's just showing today why they were concerned. And man, yeah, more sports. Not very, not very uh, clean racing today for both ends of the, for uh, both drivers. Whoa, Skyla Johnson just came over into the 01 of Dunn LaPrade, and now she's around. A lot of carnage in this race today. Good lord. Out for the lead. Zach Rodgers going around the outside on uh, Michael Cavanero here for the lead. And Coey Lamas, that's what he wants. He wants to see that in front of him, those two battling so he can re-catch up to these guys. Rogers makes an easy pass on Michael Cavanero. Not too surprising. Rogers and Lamas probably got their cars, have their tires heated up more than Cavanero's does at the moment. Michael Cavanero all over the back bumper of the 40A. If he could just not hook him here as Lamas gets into that grass part a little bit. Here comes the 83. And look who is now making his appearance up in the front. That's Mr. Charlie Fibrosis, who has been quiet these past couple of weeks. Making his run up towards the leaders. He wants a chance at this win. Ooh, Lamas taps the quarter panel of the 83, trying to get him a little bit squirrely so he can make a repass as quick as he can. But no, Cavanero holding firm. That's what's been very impressive by Michael Cavanero so far in his rookie year. Despite his his struggles with consistency and putting on, and despite having issues with running inside the top ten and then falling out of it for some unexplained reason, well, for some reason that's not really his fault. He's a pretty solid and, you know, on the track, very c firm and consistent. Knows how to keep the car on the track for the most part. It's not that bad for a rookie. I'd say he's actually on par with Petrov on a lot of cases, but. That's just, like I said, struggled with the finishes, and that's held him back. I would arguably say if he hadn't had so much bad luck or so many things not go his way, he'd maybe be in the top five in points, maybe, because he's, Cavanero, I believe, sits 11th as we talk, as we speak. Probably going to be a little bit higher now because of that, but they say three team has a lot to be desired, and it's not even their fault. This is a three pit stop race. Here comes Zach Rogers. He shall surrender the lead to make his for to make his second pit stop. Second of time the day. we're gonna watch Michael Cavanero on his pit exit. Zach Rogers easily beats the 83 this time. I think Lamas. Where the heck is Lamas? He just disappeared. Lamas fell behind a good chunk on that pit stop along with Kevin Arrow, Zach Rogers with a very, very nice pit stop. Meanwhile, Charlie Fibrosis goes from fourth to second on that round of pit stops as he looks to try and run down Zach Rogers, who is probably who has probably been the most dominant car of the day out of the three the three uh, battlers. But Fibrosis is coming. That nine car hasn't won in a while. And with them still in championship contention. This 19 is not going to give up. Here comes the three cars. Zach Rogers coming down to make his final pit stop of the race. The race has gone unusually quiet these past couple laps, and now the final pit stop with just a few laps to go as Fibrosis follows him down pit Fibrosis lane. Fibrosis right behind Rogers off the pit stop saying, you're not getting out of my sight. I'm coming for you. And now we got to wonder where Cavanero and Lamas will end up on Lamas pit already pitted the lap before. Michael Cavanero really decided to stretch to stretch it out this time that might have cost them a little bit but no Michael Cavanero out into the lead like after the first pit stop that 83 team up and up down up on the pit stops today first they got the lead then they lost and fell the way to fourth and now they've gotten the lead again and now he's just got to hold off a couple however, of however the race is far from over Zach Rodgers and Charlie Fibrosis are all over Michael Cavanero with two laps to go this is not over by a long shot as they are reeling him in. The 83 does not look as strong as it was earlier, but 
Then again, Rogers has no has had no problems making passes for the lead, and we've had several of those today, honestly. But don't forget about Fibrosis, who's up there. Demax has made his way up to fourth. Lamas has filled to fifth. He's going to be out of this thing unless something drastic happens. Coming to the white flag in a moment, but check this one out. Maxwell Chan is sitting 10th. Now keep in mind, Chan has pitted twice. He has not pitted his, his third time. We're hearing the 99 team is trying to stretch it. Now, this is not new for SRT. This team has gone most of their best finishes on strategies like this. Chan could be on his way to a top 10, and if he can just make this car around, it'll be his best career finish. By Take a long the white shot. flag, but we got three wide up here for, I believe this is 12th. Galligan for three wide. Block stuck the nose in there. Here comes Galligan. Whoa, 97 slides. He saved it along with the 44. How did he save that? That was nuts. 97 was absolutely sideways off that corner. Block just hit Novakovsky. This is the white flag. Zach Rogers trying to beat Michael Cavanero. Lap car, James Shelley. Get out of the way, buddy. Michael Cavanero trying to get his first career DuPont World Series of Racing victory. The 83 team has had so many heartbreaks this season, so many good runs down the drain, and most of them have weren't even their own fault. But Rogers, Fibrosis, two guys still in this championship fight, trying to get the most amount of points possible. Two rookies have won this season. Petrov with three, and Turner with two. Michael Cavanero down the straightaway trying to become the third different rookie to score a win. Something that has never happened before in the history of this series. Rodgers doesn't look like he's going to get him. 83 looks like he's got a, a big boost of speed now. Down the straightaway. Fibros is on the back of the three trying to see if he can sneak in a second. That nine car is fast. One last corner to go if the A3 can make it around. Contact, someone's in pit lane. And A3, not a good exit off the corner as we come down to the checkered flag. Michael Cavanero's going to score his first DuPont World Series of Racing victory here in the Netherlands. And becomes the third different rookie to win. So far this season, a series record. And that 83 team, pit, pit lane, that team is going absolutely berserk. Rogers gets second. Fibrosis almost got him for it, but he will have to settle for third. We're being told Maxwell Chan just finished ninth. You gotta be kidding me. We're also being told that. Novakovsky and Duncan might have just finished 11th and 12th or somewhere around that area. So you're telling me Super Racing Team just got a, just had all their cars finish inside the top 15 in one race. That is amazing. Michael Cavanero is finally a winner this season. And b makes a new record out of it. And look at Rodgers and Fibrosis lining up side by side behind him as they... Celebrate the victory and the night car has gone around. Fibrosis looks like he lost it. <laughs> oh, James Shelley looks like he's out of gas. <laughs> oh, man. Check this out. It's after the checker flag, chance out of gas along with Novakovsky behind him. If we can get a shot. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> All the SRT cars are out of gas except for Tunky. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Once again, SRT with the smart strategy giving them... A fantastic finish. You gotta give a round of applause to them. That is unbelievable. Both of them are out of gas. <laughs>
for the second race of the weekend. I am not quite sure if anything could even come close to being that last race in terms of um, entertainment factor, but green flag back in the air. Michael Cavanero just coming off his first career victory, and whoa, Lamas decides to force three wide on both Harlem Pomor Sports cars of Ian Dutta and Zachary Fitzwater. Rogers all up in the grill, the 83. Oh, oh no, someone I think just went around. I'm hearing so we got squealing. an accent. Jordan Smith and Travel making contact and Dunn the Pratt who had nothing to deal with, nothing to do with it. And Dylan Thoreau also getting involved. Bow for the lead again here. Zach Rogers, he was not too thrilled about finishing second to this A3 car. You can bet he is not going to accept that one today. Jeff Hibrosi slots into third, Demax into fourth. Lamas, Fitzwater had a really good run yesterday. He's got a good starting position. And ooh, Rogers did take the lead, but A3 trying to get a run. Single file already. Chan and Nowakowski are already being bumped to the back. That isn't surprising, but you know, I have a feeling that SRT is going to have a really good weekend. They've already had a, one of their best performances as a team this whole season. But you know, I got a feeling that perhaps something more for them to take place for this weekend. That's a, SRT has relied on smarts to get their finishes. And while it maybe is not the most deserving, it's still very, you know, impressive considering what they have to work with. And there's a lot of talk behind the scenes of this team getting some big engine improvements next season. So we'll see how that transpires as, well, Kavner lost the lead to the three. He got it back and lost it again in one lap. Okay. Whoa, Pollard, whoa, Pollard just merged in front of Jesse Turner. That's been a big problem, has uh, been spotters in that corner. You know, the spotters have been, uh, and the uh, crew chiefs have been complaining about that corner being kind of tough for um, their uh, spotters and race control to see, but. Oh, it's getting very Pollard. messy up here in the uh, near the mid pack as Petrov decides to put three wide. Whoa, Siron forcing the 70 into Petrov, and no, nope, Angel. Oh, I thought he flew, I thought he was going to flip, but no. Petrov and Angel off the track, and Petrov, who already had a tough starting position. Oh, he, now he's going to have to make up ground that he already made up again. This has been Petrov's worst weekend so far already. Whoa, watch out. Three wide doesn't work. Yeah, that wasn't smart. Oh, Washer's around. Oh, boy. Oh, no, we got Carnage, Carnivanero, Jake Baskinger is in oh, trouble, DJ Curtis, more cars around, everyone's hitting the wall. Ooh, ooh, bam, bam, Delise involved. Tons of chaos. That was nuts. All right, so I'm kind of confident we're going to have at least a couple of points penalties after this uh, round is over. Remember, the next race is the Race of Legends. So everyone's trying to get as many points as they can. The Race of Legends is a very important race for for uh, points and uh, other things, but considering the Race of Legends race is going to be worth basically one race is going to be worth three races, which is pretty nuts, honestly. So that's going to be an, a fun one. So I think a lot of this aggression, a lot of this really dirty driving, is probably a um, effect of you know, getting as many points as you can, especially with only a few rounds to go in the season. Rogers coming down. We're going to kick off some pit stops here. Rogers, Cavanero, and Fibros is the top three all coming down to Eugene pit Eugene Demax, together. he was the leader coming down pit road as the final group of people finally made their first pit stops. And Demax, who was four, trying to get first. He couldn't do it. Michael Cavanero has the lead. Not anymore. <laughs> oh, here we go. Demax versus Cavanero. Side by side for the lead coming off pit road. Rogers had a very rough pit stop, it looks like. Trophy Brosis managed to pass to Max, and now the number nine trying to catch up to the 83. Now, Trophy Brosis versus Michael Cavanero, that's a battle I want to see. Fibrosis has been very, very good this weekend, very consistent, has stayed in the top five. For both races so far. And now trying to catch up to the leader. Michael Cavanero trying to become, if, if I remember correctly, the first rookie to win two races in a row. Never been done before. 
And now Fibro is trying to see if he can pull it off here today. He is just right on the back of the. Oh, Vincent Allen has lost the engine as he gets into Fitzwater. And whoa, no, oh no. Oh, Fitzwater hooked him into Skyla Johnson. And that's a tough break for, eight, for the 84. Whoa, Siron, Washer, and Sanford just lost it trying to avoid the zero car. Oh boy, that's. That was a rough one. And to be fair, the 84 was in the middle of the track, but oh second of third pit stops today for Michael Cavanero as he begins the second run of Fibros fuel. Fibrosis has got the lead after Cavanero pitted, but will that be the same case? Looks like it. Now let's see the 83. Fibrosis looks like he just stole the lead. Three for the cars are still out on the track. Jesse Turner, Veronica Novakovsky, and Ian Dutta have all stayed out. Interesting strategy. Um, getting, you know, these guys are trying to limit their fuel stops and, and such and uh, trying to get as much as they can. I mean, tire wear has actually not been too important on this racetrack. It's actually been very nice to the tires considering it's an airport track, but Turner currently leads, but he's coming down pit road. In Ian a Dutta continues to stay out as we are coming up to the final pit stops of the race. This is where things are going to get a little hairy. But Dutta, the reason why he is the leader is because he pitted early. He's not going to be able to make it. He's going to have to pit at least one more time, we believe, as he looks like he's about to put Josh Yeah, Dutta down. coming down for his final pit stop, as is everybody else. Remember, Dutta pitted a lot later on that second one, but he's actually pitting very early for this one. I wonder if he did this on purpose. Maybe he's trying to pit with the leaders and... Uh, Dutta was outside. Dutta was inside the top eight. That gamble he took was worked. He and we're actually being told he only took left side tires on the last stop, and that's pretty much how he got the lead. So that's an interesting call, and it may have just worked Rose out. Rose took favorite. the lead after Cavanero surrendered. After Dutta and Cavanero surrendered it, and the nine car, he's going to end up in front of the 83 again. The CBM team on point with the pit stops today. But here comes the 83 of Michael Cavanero. Jesse Turner, remember he pitted later than everybody else. There goes Veronica Novakovsky. She hasn't pitted for her last time yet. But Jesse Turner in front of Eugene Demax. No way. You gotta be kidding me. Jesse Turner has passed a hell of a lot of people here. And Michael Cavanaugh and Fibrosis are still behind some of the people who have not pitted yet. And here comes Zach Rogers now. He just broke Cavanaugh and Fibrosis in half. Eugene Max has lost power in the 92. He's out of it. He has lost the engine. That is a tough break for the 92. Oh, man. Demax was having a really very solid weekend up to this point. Now, if people can just watch out for him. Nobody hit him. 10-4, oh goodness. Veronica Novakovsky leading, coming down to two laps to go. And what is an absolutely unbelievable moment that could be transpiring right here. Cavanero and the others are catching up to these guys. Turner's guy, Turner took no tires. Veronica Novakovsky's just slow. But this 98 team with two laps to go, trying to make it around and possibly steal this thing. But here comes Turner. Novakovsky, their team is telling her she can make it. She's just got to wheel it through. But here comes Jesse Turner. Turner's got no tires, but he is pushing up to the 98. The horsepower, this is where the 98's downfall is going to be. Well, she does have the better tires, most likely she doesn't have the horsepower and that's honestly going to be the big difference here here comes Lamas there's Dutta these guys are stretching it with their strategy some of them took no tires at all it's showing as Michael Kavner and others are catching quickly here comes Jesse Turner gonna try and take the lead Side by side, Turner's going to win the drag race. 98's got no horsepower to beat him. Jesse Turner looking for his third win of the season as he's going to go right by the 98. Lee change coming to the white flag. There's Cody Lamas. Cody Lamas up to third. 
He might have a run at this as well. He may be able to catch Turner. Dunn is also there as well. We can't forget about him. This top five just got the top five just turned upside down from that last pit stop. Strategy making a big difference. This is today. the white flag. Jesse Turner. His teammate Michael Cavanero scored his first win yesterday. Last week, Jesse Turner got his second career victory at Rockingham when he managed to beat Michael Block in the closing lap. Held off Michael Block in the closing laps. And don't forget about when he won at New Zealand earlier in the season where he managed to out race Charles Jackson and held off a charging Jacob Antony. This 82 team has been a part of some very exciting finishes. Jesse Turner, we expected him to be a big juggernaut on the ovals as a very as a oval champion in other series. But so far, he's looked his best on the road courses. And just a couple of corners to go. Here's the bow for second place. Veronica Novakovsky trying to hold off Cody Lamas. If she can do this, I'll be impressed. But let, once again, this is where the horsepower is going to not be in the 98's favor. Coming down to the checker flag, just two turns to go. If Novakovsky can make it around, she's running on fumes at this point. She could run out at any time. Lamas makes the pass for second. Veronica Novakovsky tries the crossover, but coming down to the checkered flag, Jesse Turner is going to score his third win of the 2015 DuPont World Series of Racing season. And ties pitch off for rookie wins this year. Cody Lamas gets second and probably one of the biggest upset endings in the history of DuPont World Series of Racing. Veronica Novakovsky will finish on the podium in third place. Unbelievable. Novakovsky and she's out of gas. She's out of gas, but she got third. Oh my goodness. I knew SRT wasn't going to be done this weekend. We still got one more race to go. 98's out of gas. And you got to feel for the A3 and the 9. They got trumped today. They just got absolutely trumped on the fuel strategy. I don't think any of them saw that top five in front of them and what they all did. Man, that was insane. for the final race of the weekend and probably what has been one of the most entertaining race weekends we have ever seen. Josh travel on the pole for the reverse grid race as he was the final car on the lead lap. So he gets to start in pole position. Chris Washer goes three wide on Dunn LaPrade. Oh, 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 Washer with the power move. Whoa, my goodness. Watch out, Josh travel in the lead. With his Patriots Trophy rival Dunn LePrade pushing him. But look at Washer, look at those tires working his way through. Seeing par third, Sean Angel behind. Looks like Washer's going to get the lead if he can just clear the Welshman. So far we haven't seen any accidents, at least as far as I can tell. These cameras aren't very good to be honest, but whoa, travel, very aggressive defending on the 77, but Washer takes the lead. Oh boy, three wide, Sidio trying to stick his nose in there, oh no, no, watch out, they used to go all the way up into the 74, and Pericles did not like that at all, he's gonna dump the 57. Whoa, oh no, bigger accident, Tim Tamir Delis just went around. We got another car around. Charles Sanfer. Whoa, someone's on their roof. I think that's Skyla Johnson. Uh, my bad. It was actually Jake Baskinger. Whoa, what the? Well, somehow Jake Baskinger managed to go on his roof. Um, I can't explain that one. Um, whoops. We're hearing an accident. And wow, Ian Dutta just dumped <laughs> Coey Lamas. And whoa, Dutta almost wrecked himself there. Lamas up into the wall. That's a 
tough break. What's with the grass? Is there a light show going Bound on? Bound for the lead, oh, okay. Jacob Anthony on Chris Washer here. Both these two guys are winless. Oh, Anthony just kind of, I think, just dumped Washer and Washer off into the wall. There is going to be a lot of penalties by the end of this weekend. Oh, We're my look goodness. At this again. Anthony gives up two bumps in the 77, gets him a squirrely. Washer goes off a little bit. And, oh, wow. Chris Washer just came up and blocked the 10 entering the corner. And honestly, I don't even think that was Jacob Anthony's fault. But that was just Washer, I think, being over aggressive on the defending. Too early. Lama's in this very race. slow in front of the leader. Oh, no. Jacob Anthony from the lead. Coley Lamas to knock it out of the way. Wow. And Jacob Anthony. Just lost the lead. More bad luck for the 10 car. Good lord. What was Llamas doing? Get out of the way. Like I said, probably more penalties by the end of this weekend. Oh my god, my voice still cracks. You know, it's been like forever and I, my voice still cracks. This is this is Charles late. Jackson has somehow ended up with the lead after all that chaos. Okay. And uh, we've also had our first round of pit stops today. And we are already coming up on our second one. There's Tamir Delis, currently trying to hold off second place from Alan Cavanero and Sean Galligan. Second round of pit stops, and Sean Galligan just overtook Charles Jackson on pit lane. That's for the lead. Um, okay, Sean Galligan, Arpa Moore Sports, a blistering 12.1 pit stop. That's one of the best pit stops of the weekend. Arpa Moore Sports with their class a pit crew that has gotten them so many has helped propel them to so many good finishes as sean gallagher look at that gap has moved up into first place al cavanero exiting pit lane here comes delise who had nowhere to go and alan cavanero is gonna dump the 56 in response come on man this wrecking is getting a little bit out of hand to say the least as we look at DJ Curtis, who has had quite the interesting weekend. Pretty quiet, actually, for the 19. Besides being involved in a few um, accidents that weren't really his fault. But DJ Curtis still hanging on strong here. Oh, spoke too soon. Oh, my God. That's a bad accident. That was exactly like what happened to Jacob Anthony and Lamas. Oh, we got more trouble. Cora's around, Jordan Davis is around, James Shelley's around, Josh Travel's around. That's another CBM car. Oh, we got more trouble in the back, more trouble. 36 around, Petrov's around, he's got big damage, 29 around. Everyone's self-spinning. Oh, there's oil, we're being told there might be oil in the chicane. Might have been left from what Lamas was dropping because he was having that problem and same from Shelley's car as well. Oh my goodness Here's a look me. of the oil chicane accident. Michael Cavanero goes around. Zach Rodders, big damage. Jordan Davis, Alan Cavanero getting involved as he actually hit Davis while he was down. <laughs> Whoa, boy. Travel. Ooh, Delise with a crunch. D Dylan Thoreau. Cidino and 09 lost it. Fibrosis lost it. Davis gets a piece. Dylan Young, Michael Block around. A lot of cars just went, just crashed. Al Cavanero just hit the five car while he was down. Way to beat the dead horse. After the exit of his final pit stop, Sean Galligan has a substantial lead on the field. Now this 44 car is just going to make his way around for the next few laps because he's got a very, very large coming lead. Coming down to the final corner, Maxwell Chan has wrecked. But coming off the final turn, Jake Baskinger is a lap down. He's not a factor, but coming to the checker flag, Sean Galligan will score a win this year. He gets the checker flag here in Netherlands for the final race of the weekend. And Hopper Moore Sports gets another car in victory lane. Here is Sean Galligan. Excellent run to him.